Hey guys, welcome to our Friday video. We are back with the LGA 2011 platform and today we're checking out a 6 core 12 thread processor that you can buy from AliExpress for 29 US dollars including free shipping. I really like the LGA 2011 platform. I'm using one in my main daily driver that I use to do all my video editing. And while it's not for everyone, I really like it and I know many of you do as well. So we will take a closer look at the CPU, but also talk about the main board, the RAM, and I'll touch on the risks and downsides as well. We have prices and we will compare prices also against going for a first generation Ryzen system. And of course there are benchmarks, we have power consumption figures, and I tested a lot of games to see what this processor can do and if it's worth considering. So this is the Xeon E5 2630V2 for LGA 2011, built on the 22 nanometer process. So this is from the IV Bridge generation, six cores and 12 threads. The base clock is 2600 megahertz, but it will boost up to 2900 megahertz in game. So that's the all core turbo speed. We have a quad channel DDR3 memory controller running at 1600 megahertz and a 80 watt TDP. Cheap RAM is one of the main highlights of LGA 2011. So it takes not only regular desktop DDR3 memory, but also server grade registered ECC memory. And we have a 32 gigabyte RAM kit here. These are rated at 1,333 megahertz, but you can just go into the BIOS and overclock it to 1,600 megahertz. And the prices are really good. For a 32 gigabyte RAM kit, you're looking at 60 US dollars. And if you're happy with 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're looking at only 30 US dollars. The main board is especially for me the most interesting aspect, but it's also quite controversial. So you have a choice. You can get a second-hand main board from MSI, Asus or Gigabyte, but they cost a lot of money if you look for a used uh, 2011 motherboard on eBay. And the other option is you go to AliExpress and you buy a Chinese brand new LGA 2011 main board. And they're building these main boards to bundle them with used RAM and processors. Yeah, make some money. So you're looking at around $80 for a main board like this one. So this is the Plex HD Turbo, and this is one of the nicer main boards. We have a ton of PCI Express slots. The layout with the uh, power connectors is fairly decent. We have VRM cooling, four RAM slots, uh, which support quad channel. There are six SATA ports. So at first glance, this looks pretty decent. But if you look a little bit closer, and I've done this in a recent video where I uh, put this main board through all its paces, you discover little quirks and things that are not that great. For example, sleep mode does not work. You can shut down the machine, but when you put it into sleep, it will still run at full blast and consume just as much power as if it was running, just the screen goes black. The SATA ports, uh, there's only one of them that does SATA 3. All the other five ports only do SATA 2. We have an M.2 slot. Unfortunately, it runs at half the speed. The PC Express is 2.0, not 3.0. This varies a little bit between boards. On some of them it works on full, uh, on full speed, on some of them it doesn't. There's a way around because this main board has so many PCI Express slots, you can just get one of these. This will give you full M.2 speed and you can boot from it. But that's another unnecessary purchase that you need to consider. Also little things like uh, the main board mentioning SLI when it's not SLI compatible and you don't get modern features like uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 for example. And finally the BIOS is extremely minimalistic. It looks ancient. It doesn't have many options. There is zero overclocking whatsoever. The only Overclocking you can do on these main boards is if you get an unlocked processor and they are just too expensive, you better off picking a Ryzen. But with the RAM prices and the CPU prices being so cheap, maybe the value is still there and that's something we will find out in this video when we have a look at the gaming performance and then look at prices. So quickly let's talk about the prices. $80 for the main board, 
$29 for the RAM and $27 for a 16 gigabyte RAM kit, we're looking at 136 US dollars. For a budget 6 core Ryzen system, you're looking at $57 for a A320 mainboard. All these parts are also from AliExpress. $87 for a Ryzen 5 1600 and $64 for a 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM kit. So all up, that's $208. So a little bit more compared to the LGA 2011 platform, but it will perform better. The Ryzen has an all-core turbo of 3.2 gigahertz, so that is faster than the uh, LGA 2011 processor. Also, the IPC is higher, so you will end up with significantly better performance. If you spend a bit more on a B450 mainboard, you can overclock this CPU easily to 3.7, 3.8 gigahertz and get even more performance out of the machine. RAM prices is uh, still a little bit higher on DDR4, but they have come down since. And here are some of the other parts we're using in this project. We've got the RX 580 with 8GB of VRAM. To avoid any GPU bottlenecks, we are testing in most games at 720p. So once again, we're doing this because we're evaluating the processor and the mainboard and the RAM and not really testing the video card. I'm using, once again, our deep cool uh, power supply, 650 watts fully modular. And also continuing on with testing the IC graphite thermal pad. This is the 40 by 40 millimeter sized version. Worked great with this processor. And I'm using a towel cooler with heat pipes from AliExpress for socket 2011. This one screws directly into the socket. The system turned out to be quite energy efficient. Sitting idle on the desktop, 49 watts for the entire computer and running Cinebench, I saw 94 watts. Next up we got Firestrike. We're looking at 11,676 for the overall score, 14,927 for graphics, and 10,714 for physics. We have a Cinebench R15 results, 771. In Cinebench R20, we're getting 1,579. And I have a comparison figure for the Ryzen 1600, which got 2,534, so quite a bit faster. I also ran the Blender benchmark. It took 44 minutes and 43 seconds. And once again, the Ryzen 1600 did a lot better, completing in 29 minutes and 26 seconds. And now we're going to have a look at some games. And for this video, I actually managed to find some extra time. and tested more games than usually. First up, let's try some highly optimized games. We've got Doom using the Vulkan API, 720p, high details, runs perfect. Silky smooth, well over 100 FPS. That's how it should be. Strange Brigade is very similar, also using the Vulkan API uh, and runs really well on uh, low powered processors, uh, also over 100 FPS with high detail, 720p, so looks absolutely stunning. I downloaded the demo for Pro Evolution Soccer 2020, uh, 720p. I don't believe there are any graphics options to play around with. Um, if there are, I just left everything at default and yep, seems to be running really well at over 150 FPS. Next up is Hitman 2 and I tested two levels. First we have the Night Call level which runs really well. Well over 60 FPS so uh, you get the impression that the whole game will run that well but later levels can be a lot more demanding. Here we have the level called the finish line and yeah surprisingly it doesn't run too bad. We are getting over 60 FPS. Uh, pretty much all of the time. There is one spot where the game stutters and skips a little bit, but for most of the part, it runs pretty well. Forza Horizon 4. This one I tested at 1080p with high details and seems to be running well. I believe we are running into a GPU bottleneck, but the RX 580 seems to be powerful enough to run this game quite comfortably. Let's have a look at some more racing games. And Aldi comes first, Dirt 3. So 1080p, max details and also 4x uh, NT aliasing to make the graphics look a bit nicer. Over 100 FPS, so this gives you an idea of uh, older games. They should run really well on this machine. Grid 2, this is also a slightly older game. Uh, 1080p, high details, over 100 FPS. So that's another racing game that runs really well on this machine. 
Something more demanding, Dirt Rally, 720p with high details, and even this game, over 100 FPS. So this processor seems to be doing quite well so far. We've tested a few games and they all seem to be running uh, quite well. So it looks like that the value actually might not be too bad. Let's try a more demanding racing game, Project Cars 2. Again, 720p with a mix of, uh, yeah, mostly high details if there was a slider. I set it too high and it's using the same details as in previous videos. There are two tracks that I'm testing. There's a Formula 1 track which is a little bit less demanding and yep we're getting well over 60 fps and then there's another track where there's some rain going on which puts more strain on the system but even here over 60 fps so really excellent outcome. I'm very impressed with this performance. Fortnite 720p with epic details. The game has quite severe skips and stutters, especially in the beginning, but it seems to uh, calm down and then we're getting decent FPS. So uh, I've been told that this might be an issue because of Amazon Afterburner, but I actually didn't have the time to properly look into this. Another popular game is Apex Legends. Here we're testing at 720p with maximum details. And once again, we're getting very decent FPS. Definitely better than my skills in this game. Well over 60 FPS, so you should be happy playing Apex on such a machine. The search is next, 720p, high details. Seems to run excellent, well over 60 FPS. So compared to playing it on most consoles where it's probably targeted at 30 FPS, uh, it's a step up and yeah, seems to be a good looking game. Haven't been able to uh, spend too much time in playing this game any further. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this is the demo version. We're running at 720p with high details. Uh, this spot that I'm showing on the screen is a little bit less demanding, so the performance can be a little bit deceiving. There are areas in the game where it gets a lot more demanding and the performance goes down. But I have tried other areas in the game and the performance is pretty solid. So um, another game that runs well. Far Cry 4, this is an older game. 720p high details. It runs okay most of the time, but I did see some dips below 60. This is a typical uh, Ubisoft game that uh, likes high performance uh, cores that are high clocked uh, with a high clock speed and running at only 2.9 gigahertz. This is definitely not the case with our processor. And Far Cry 5, we're seeing a similar result. We have a ton of cores and threads, but we don't have a high enough clock speed. So like Far Cry 4, it runs okay most of the time, but here we can see more dips below 60, even going into the 40s. The Witcher 3, 720p high details. We're getting over 60 FPS, but in this short sequence, I can see some frame time issues and skips and stutters. So once again, this is an observation I have made with processors where the clock speed is not high enough. It just seems to run in some sort of a, into some sort of a bottleneck. Conarium, this is an interesting game. It's from the uh, Epic Store and every week it seems or every two weeks they give you a free game and uh, yeah, I've been picking them up and collecting but haven't really been using them in my videos. Um, not quite sure what this game is about. It's only the introduction sequence running at 720p with high details. We're getting well over 100 FPS. So um, those, yeah, such free games that you can pick up from the Epic Store. Uh, they're a little bit older and they seem to be running really well. And let's have a look at some retro games. Half-Life 2, this is with 1080p with maximum details and we're getting almost 300 FPS. So uh, yeah, you've got to be happy with that. But does it run Crisis? Unfortunately, it doesn't. So we are playing at 1080p with very high details, which is the highest setting that Crisis has available. And we're seeing drops to 30 FPS. So definitely not playable, not what we want to see on the PC and just shows how poorly this game is optimized. So guys, there's a lot to talk about. Let's start with the performance. Pretty happy to be honest. We had a look at some LGA 2011 platform CPUs in the past that run around two gigahertz and the clock speed was just too low. But going from two gigahertz to around three, that's a 30% boost in performance. And it seems to be enough for most games to be actually playable. I say most games, not every game and that's really the deciding factor for many of you whether or not you consider LGA 2011 or spend a little bit more 
and upgrade to a first generation Ryzen system, especially on a B. 350 or B450 mainboard, you can overclock the Ryzen CPUs and at 3.7, 3.8 gigahertz, they will run circles around the LGA 2011 platform that we looked at in this video. But if price is your main concern and every dollar counts, then you can save quite a bit of money by picking up a $80 mainboard, the processor and some registered ECC memory. Just be aware that you're investing in an old platform. Uh, there are very few upgrade options. We do have some uh, nice assortment of PCI Express slots, so you can uh, install a few PCI Express expansion cards, so that is nice. But for example, just a single SATA 3 port and very limited bias. There's basically no support. And if anything goes wrong, uh, wrong with the warranty, good luck. Uh, very likely you're not gonna get much help. And I've tried, I've tried contacting the support to see, you know, simple questions like, is there a BIOS update or which processes are supported? And you just don't get any reply. Whereas even if you buy an, uh, one of those Ryzen mainboards from AliExpress, there are companies that are behind these products and I have contacted them like Colorful and they do reply in English and they tell you, yes, there will be a BIOS update for the Ryzen 3600 and um, they did. They notified me when the BIOS update was available. So with those main boards with the Ryzen first gen platform, there is support and you're not totally on your own. So again, it boils down to where do you live? What sort of parts do you have access to? What prices are you seeing? In Australia, if you live in a large city, uh, you have a healthy used market. Um, if there's an MSY store, you're gonna get good prices. Have a look on Osbargen, have a look on uh, with eBay coupons. There are always deals going around. In the US, uh, Newegg, of course, Amazon, but Microsender usually has the best prices. But I have a lot of viewers from other areas in the world, especially in, in, in uh, countries like Brazil and Russia, these LGA 2011 systems are extremely popular and most of the uh, sales on AliExpress go to customers from those regions. So if you're on a really tight budget and every dollar counts, the LGA 2011 platform could be interesting. For me, it's more about having fun and playing with a high-end platform from yesterday, seeing what it can do. And yeah, producing content, that's really what I'm about. Um, if I had to make a decision, um, yeah, if I can afford spending a little bit more, I would pick the Ryzen first generation system, to be honest. Uh, if I would build like a permanent gaming PC or I would give advice to someone from Australia, uh, someone young who wants to uh, know what sort of parts to buy. Might even be considering a Ryzen 2600 as well. The prices are not too bad. But yeah, so like I said, it boils down to what, you, what parts you have access to, what prices you're seeing in your region. And in the end of the day, it's your call. I hope to have painted an honest picture of what you're getting in terms of performance, but also the risks and the downsides. And we touched on the alternatives as well with the Ryzen 1600 platform. And yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what do you think. Um, we've done quite a few 2011 videos on the channel. So the, yeah, I can see us doing a few more, uh, checking out a few more, more processes, definitely, but there will also be some Ryzen content. As always, let me know what is it that you wanna see. And that's it, we're at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it interesting, be sure to subscribe, give it a like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.